This, this is Crumlin, the, the boss when the bell goes and you break out of skill. And we want to arm our road and the lonely couples are trying groups. Walking through the village to send the our connection. The real real people come together and we're known and respected. Strolling at the home site was one of the busiest places because cream makes us 60 cents for a smile on our faces. Heading up to Stanoy to hang around the park, chilling in good weather, staying there till after dark. Always a friend there, boy. Friends live close. Heading to the brew when there's nothing to do. Youth leaders warn us about getting wrapped up in drugs. Owen Tick, getting shot. Young innocent boys acting hard when they're not. No time for lighting fires. Born daylight, buzzing with the gang. Kicking ball, cracking jokes, getting along with kids and old folks. We hibernate in winter, rosary, writing and rules. Until summer kicks in, then we become big groups and the fun begins. Going on a float, cycling down the road, all around Crumlin and every other postcard. Every street full of adventure, the end of childhood games, and the form of new tribes with their own nicknames. This, this is Crumlin, this, this is our home. Young, young and old, no one, one is alone. alone. Every time someone asks me where I'm from, I always mention I'm from Ireland, from Dublin, from Crumlin. That's, that's my whole line. All the houses look the same, and all the roads and all the streets look the same. And it's, it's not really modern, but it's starting to become a bit more modern than what it used to be. And it's starting to improve of what it used to be. The disadvantage is this sort of generational stigma that comes with the area. We used to be quite well known for the crime and the drugs. And it's not like that now, but we still have a lot of people from other communities that view us like that. We were taught growing up to lie about where we're from, about different surrounding communities, to change our postcode and CVs and applications. Very much a strong stigma. There isn't many like places for young people to go. In Crumlin, the only places that like are really to go is, say, parks. And even still, they're not very, like, young people friendly. There's lots of space, but there's not many things in there. It's like a just open field and then a playground. And then you have, like, one park in the entire area that has other facilities. It has a track, it has exercise machines and all that. And it's like they just focused on one park and forgot about the rest of the three. There's not a lot to do for people that don't do sports. Like, there's a lot of places for sports, like we have Ga, we have Hurling, we have two football teams in Crumlin. But for people that aren't into sports, it's just nothing really for you to do. Personally, I'd like a skate park. Um, there's none near here. The nearest ones are Bushy Park and Weaver Park. And obviously there's little kids that would like to skateboard as well. And for them to have to go that far by themselves is really not safe more flat ground, kind of take away some of the grass maybe, like kind of just an area for new people who are skating, because a lot of people won't go to like a big skate park when they're only starting. A shopping centre where you can buy clothes, or like, uh, you know, cinemas and places you can even hang out with your friends to eat. There's not a lot of around here. You have to go to town or Tala to get that. Um, there's only really McDonald's and chippers here. There's no healthy option either. Uh, if you want like healthy options, you have to go into Dunn's and get an apple for like a euro. You just walk around, that's all you do. Really, we're left with no other options but to roam the streets and sit on park benches and we're told to move along like we have somewhere to go and we don't. Something to kind of connect people more and like make them want to kind of go out and socialize with people because I think like teenagers nowadays are like more focused on staying at home and like talking to their friends online or like things like that rather than actually going out and talking to people I think the only kind of socialization a lot of people get would be at school if I had unlimited resources I would build a center for teenagers like me that were passionate about anything. You know, if you 
uh, an up-and-coming writer or if you feel that you are very good on the dance floor we could have these guest speakers in and we could inspire each other and we could share our passions and learn from each other and I feel that we're lacking that that opportunity I definitely improve arts programs um, whether that be painting or writing or even music for some people I think there should be something there they should set up even in the library more um, talks or more classes I think they should maybe introduce people into opportunities earlier in life I would be interested in places that do with art, creative arts and drawing and all. Yeah, I would be interested. There's not many places you can do it. There's no art shop either. If you wanted an art shop, you'd have to go into town. You'd have to drive to town. You could walk, but that would take a while. And then if you drive to town, that's bad for the environment as well. There should be more facilities to help out with the artists because, trust me, there are a lot of people who love music. I'd like to add more creative arts centres. Now we do have one, there is the CCMA, that is across from the school, and I do piano there. It's a music centre and it's a lovely place and it shows what the community can be if we put the effort and the time into it. I love poetry. I've been writing it for a while and I write it all the time now. At the moment, I've written a poem. It's called Little Things. From a damp rock on a river bed to the crisp leaf of a tree. The small things in life that make me feel the look of being me. The morning dew on a flower as the sun rises in the abyss. I think of all those I've lost and ever so dearly miss. The buzz of a bee, the patter of rain, the tears in your eyes when you feel joy or pain. The small things in life, the ones we don't always appreciate. Because our minuscule lives are full of vexation and hate. So as I sit in the spring breeze and think of all those things and rejoice in just the colour of a monarch butterfly's wings. Okay, uh, the poem's called Me. <clears throat> Who am I? Well, I'm 18 years old, raised on the barn on the Crumlin Road. Young black boy, Crumlin, no accent. Only black boy in all my life's classes. Only coloured boy, I wish I wasn't alone. Had friends to help at school, but not at home. Weirdo, psycho, muppet, tick. All the crap names that my bullies would pick. Even worse names like nigger, which makes me sick. I wish I could go back in time and start over again. But you can't fast forward, rewind or pause, just press play. My mom was always there. Dad disappeared. Friends come and go, but family are still here. People always laugh at me and think that they can win through. And I hate when people judge me not knowing what I've been through. I smile when I'm hurting, and I laugh when I'm crying. And when I'm sad or alone, I keep an optimistic mind. And when I'm threatened or hurt, I still stand my ground. An African boy in a crate he was found. An irreverent way to bring my self-esteem down. But I digress. My mother comes from there with her light brown skin and her curly hair. She came from nothing. She had to work from scratch, from village to sea, but not just like that. From mad color coated fabrics to dull black and white. From joined brothers and sisters to stinging stereotypes. So again, my name is Sean, and I hope you stick around. So who am I? Well, I'm Crumlin, and I'm Irish. Sound. <laughs>